We've arrived in Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia. While most travelers pass through here on their way to Siem Reap for the famous Angkor Wat, Cambodia's capital has its own story to tell, a story of resilience and recovery. Honestly, we didn't expect much after hearing mixed reviews and stories of travelers skipping this city, but after spending three days here we were pleasantly surprised. After a busy month in Vietnam, Phnom Penh was the perfect place to slow down and recharge before heading to Angkor Wat. Between the ancient temples and modern skyscrapers, the city has its own unique charm. It's not as grand or hectic as Bangkok or Ho Chi Minh City and that's exactly what makes it stand out. In today's video we'll show you the main things to do in Phnom Penh and why it's worth a few days on your Cambodia trip. From stunning Khmer style temples to the Grand Palace and a vibrant food scene to introduce you to Cambodia's amazing cuisine. Plus Phnom Penh is the place to dive into the country's rich and tragic history. All around the city you'll come across active temples and we passed by the one called Wat Lanka on our way to the Independence Monument. It's a peaceful little oasis in the midst of Phnom Penh's busy streets. You'll often see monks walking around as the temple is connected to a nearby monastery. An interesting fact, if you're looking for a moment of tranquility, you can actually join public meditation sessions here at the temple. We are having a really great evening right now in Phnom, Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, indeed. We took a little bit of relaxing time and organizational time back at the hotel. And we came out now during sunset. We visited a temple, a more local one. Oh, it was so beautiful. It was really beautiful. And it's, it's always a good idea to come out at sunset, like in the afternoon. That's when everything is super pretty uh, outside. The light just gives everything this golden glow. Oh yeah, the golden hues in the temple uh, spots were so pretty and there was no tourist inside because it's not known, it's not a particular site. And yeah, a lot of cats. <laughs> As you can see right now, we're behind the Independence Monument in the park, mm -hmm. also with a statue of one of the kings and founders, let's say, of modern Cambodia. And yeah, it's such a nice atmosphere here. Many local people just enjoying time outside, children playing football, and just also elderly doing some uh, yeah, Tai Chi or Indeed. other stretching movements. We can just see how the sun is now slowly, slowly going yeah, behind setting. the buildings. You can oh, see in our faces actually how, yeah. how the sun is shining. Super beautiful. Golden hour, beautiful. <laughs> so we're gonna tell you more about how we came to Cambodia and what we did here and what we're gonna do still because we are staying for almost two weeks in total. So. Yeah, true. So first stop is Phnom Penh. We arrived um, actually now two days ago by bus from Vietnam. The process was much easier than we thought. Uh, because we have to go of course over the border so we had to have a visa which was all done at the spot by the company we just had to pay five dollars extra and they yeah. took care of everything mm -hmm. went super smooth yeah we booked with giant ibis it's at the near the central park where we stayed in ho chi minh uh, just hop on board took two hours or so to get to the border and there they took care of everything we just needed to get off the bus once show Indeed. our faces um, we got our stamp and our visa then, super yeah. fast. <laughs> Show your Cambodian beer please. What are we having? It's very Cambodian. <laughs> The, the public really likes your uh, <laughs> expertise on the beer. So first 
beer in Cambodia. Of course, it needs to be an Angkor. It's our first day here in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. And we're keeping the lid as always. Moritz loves collecting uh, beer lids. How do you call that? Beer caps. Bottle caps. Beer, bottle caps. And we hang them on the fridge. We put like a little um, magnet on the other side. And yeah, we like it as a little souvenir. Where are we gonna have dinner? So first meal in Phnom Penh. Moritz ordered a, a stir fried with is it beef yep. that you have? Looks it's really beef. really yummy. And I ordered a traditional amok, which is a creamy coconut milk curry, and it is usually uh, prepared with fish. And as you can see, it's like uh, steamed and served in uh, these banana leaf boats. I, the owner already unfolded it for me. It was first packed. But this is how it looks, it smells delicious and it's served with a bit of rice, so I'm gonna dig in. This will be our home for the coming days in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Our first stop. We got a little room upgrade. Look how spacious it is. We even got like a little sitting area. Looks like a nice and comfy bed. Yeah, these are our backpacks. <laughs> and also really spacious bathroom. Look at this. Shower. Looks really nice. So today we got up a little bit earlier because we wanted to go to the museum Twol Sleng, uh, the genocide museum here in Cambodia, which is also known as S21. So indeed, we got up early, got a grab to there, and uh, I think we spent like three hours uh, over there. Um, just practical first, the entrance ticket is five dollars, and if you take the audio guide, it's an extra five dollars. But we do recommend getting the audio guide. It was so valuable. Definitely. It's the best thing you can do there because you want to understand what happened there. And I have to be honest, we usually never mm. take audio guides because we can find information like next to the site, usually like on a little plaque, yeah. or we can read upon it like on the internet. Yeah, the few but times we took an audio guide, we yeah. were a bit disappointed. But in this so. case, uh, we think it's super valuable. The most valuable thing you can do there is really getting an audio guide to understand really deeply what it's about. Also the uh, narrator is really good, he speaks perfect English and has like a really nice voice to understand everything that's, that's happening there because it's a very important topic yeah. so it makes total sense. He really accompanies you along on the, all the stops on the grounds. The Genocide Museum is actually the prison itself where a lot of uh, Cambodians were held, tortured and killed during the Khmer Rouge uh, regime which was from 1975 till 1979 and alone in that prison up to 20,000 people died yeah. and it's like really haunting if you think about that only 12 actually survived yeah the the place really gets you I should get you moved because we it, we just ended up uh, I really don't know how to talk about this place basically um, the museum is the prison itself where all these people were held and tortured uh, mostly, mostly also killed and then buried either on site in the beginning or in the killing fields in which are field. outside the city. Yeah. The audio guide takes you like completely around the whole uh, facilities that, that existed there. You go from like building A, B, C, D and so on and so forth and everything is being explained where people actually were being held uh, and the place they were tortured, the prison cells itself. Also a few exhibitions about the uh, restoration works they're doing and how they're trying to keep everything there alive for people to come. There was like a person, like a painter who uh, endured all that and who, and who survived and he was doing pictures, like the pictures of what he saw, what he experienced, what happened to other prisoners and what just was going on at the time at the whole facilities there. Uh, and they're really haunting and they really make your stomach like twirl and everything. Yeah, it's we can't, we didn't take any footage of that. 
because we thought it it's, would be a little bit... It, it doesn't matter which kind of yeah. footage you take, we think you have to experience it yourself. No, uh, no video or picture is going to there make it... Yeah. A, can portray, like portray yeah. what happened there and how to put it so it's best to just visit it yourself uh, in our opinion it's like one of the important things to do just yeah. like we thought in Vietnam when we were in Ho Chi Minh City to do there the museum of uh, the war which Correct. took place yeah. because indeed um, the country is just so much more than only the temples uh, like Angkor Wat what it's known for this is really something you need to visit in order to understand more of the history of Cambodia. In our opinion, it's like a very important place, this museum, to actually go visit because it uh, shows an important part of, of the Khmer and Cambodian history, which is often forgotten or not even taught in schools. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You only hear it like decades, years later, about the atrocities which, which happened in this country. And you have to imagine, it were, it were up to two or three million people who died from torture, being killed um, yeah, from, from, from starvation, um, even though their population was only eight million at the time. It's like a quarter of their population was wiped out during those four years. All the way towards the exit, there are actually two people sitting, I guess they're almost daily there, and there are actually two survivors of um, the genocide that happened here and they both uh, showcase their book uh, yeah that explains what they experienced at the place um, we actually passed by one and got it it's, it's only it's, ten dollars it's basically their life story like brought mm -hmm. on paper uh, for everybody to read and they also sign it and if you want you can take pictures or like talk to the person but we were like a little bit numbed from the place so we, yeah. we bought a book because we also wanted to have something that reminds us of, of the place and has information that we can share with others yeah. that's the only thing indeed i could say about it at the end we were just numbed we needed to take a seat on a bench and talk about it a little bit about the things we saw and learned um, After visiting the Tool Slang Museum, we needed a little pick-me-up, so we headed to Suzy Time Cafe. This is a place with a really fun and unique concept. Here you can create your own coffee, tea or juice. Each table has a set of cards and you start by choosing your base from the larger cards, like a specific type of coffee or juice, and then customize it with the smaller cards. These allow you to add toppings like flavored syrups, adjust your sugar level or choose the amount of milk you want. Once you created your drink, you place your cards on the holder. One of the coolest features is the time card. For a base price, you can enjoy unlimited drinks for an entire hour after your first order and for a small extra fee, you can extend that time. It's a popular spot for expats and students thanks to the peaceful atmosphere and high-speed internet. And don't forget the free cookie bar, a sweet bonus. There's also an outdoor seating if you prefer to relax outside. So we're going to the Royal Palace right now. And as you can see, I'm fully covered up because we read online, as a woman, you should definitely cover up your shoulders. Uh, with actually a blouse. Uh, apparently a scarf is not enough, so keep that in mind. And yeah, long pants, long skirt. So I hope it's sufficient. <laughs> One of the top things to do in Phnom Penh is visiting the Royal Palace. This stunning complex sits right along the riverside and is still the official residence of Cambodia's royal family. The palace was built in 1866 during the reign of King Norodom and has witnessed some of Cambodia's most significant events. Over the years, it's been expanded and renovated, now standing as a symbol of the country's resilience and strength. The royal palace is a blend of history, tradition and Khmer craftsmanship. The golden rooftops, tropical gardens and elegant temples are truly impressive. Some of the highlights you'll see include the Silver Pagoda, also known as the Temple of the Emerald Buddha. 
Its name comes from its floor, which is covered with over 5000 silver tiles. Now they're mostly hidden by protective rugs and carpets, so you won't be able to see them. There is also the Moonlight Pavilion, visible from the square. This open-air pavilion has a balcony overlooking the palace walls, where the royal family watches parades and processions. As you walk around the palace, you'll come across long halls with frescoes that tell the story of the Ramayana. It's a great place to take your time, enjoy the artwork and check out the royal pieces on display. In the Silver Pagoda Square, you'll see several white stupas scattered around, with the most impressive being the stupa of King Norodom, which has some really nice details and statues. There is also a cool miniature version of Angkor Wat that you can find nearby. The complex itself has some interesting carvings and details throughout. We had an amazing time exploring the grounds, especially since it wasn't too crowded when we were there. <laughs> so we just took a little break, but I just still wanted to say something about the Royal Palace this morning. Before we went we were reading some reviews, right? And how oh, people had like mixed opinions to be honest, which made us doubt if it was really worth it. But in all honesty, we would still recommend going. Even though the entrance fee is $10, um, it's still so beautiful. It reminded me in a few aspects like the Grand Palace in Bangkok, but it's smaller. But nonetheless, it's really beautiful and not that many visitors. I also definitely compared to the one in Bangkok. Um, so yeah, we were at certain points practically alone. So we really enjoyed it. Just a few side notes, check opening times because it does close during lunchtime. So it is open from 8 till 11 and there are a few like miscommunications or not transparency enough regarding uh, the fact that they're gonna, when they're gonna close. So what we did, we walked to the second part at a certain time and we still wanted to get back to the previous part and we couldn't anymore because they said they were uh, slowly closing up the morning part so we were a bit disappointed that we couldn't return so just keep those things in mind okay so now we're on the next on to the next stop uh, the Wat Phnom Down Pen uh, which you can see behind me the temple so it's located a little bit above it looks really beautiful this charming Buddhist temple in the heart of Phnom Penh is a must visit. Amid the city's hustle, it stands as one of the oldest temples, set within a peaceful garden on a small hill. After climbing 50 steps, we were welcomed by lanterns and Buddhist flags decorating the entrance in celebration of Khmer New Year. Inside, the shrine features a bronze seated Buddha surrounded by statues and murals that depict Buddha's early journeys. While the temple itself isn't large, its interior is one of the most beautiful we've seen. The highlight? A cozy little cat family curled up in a shrine, adding a sweet and an unexpected touch to our visit. After exploring the temple, you can wander through the gardens and try to spot the clock dial nearby. After checking out the Wat Phnom, we headed for dinner and had some amazing dumplings and homemade noodles. We can really recommend this place.
that was it for a short but sweet visit to Phnom Penh, the capital. Would you give Phnom Penh a chance on your next Southeast Asian adventure? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and we will see you next time when we're heading to Siem Reap to see the amazing Angkor Wat.